Hello, everyone, to the cyberspace audience and to the people here. Simon Jacobson is my name, and I will be leading this uh, Wednesday Night Live, as I've been doing, thank God, for uh, the last, uh, um, uh, from the previous century, um, 20th century, it was 1982, is when this class began. It began like a night like tonight, a wintry night, it was snowy, and a fellow that called me, um, who actually passed away last year, a, a businessman, someone had suggested that he come speak to me as uh, looking for spiritual inspiration. So he brought along a friend, and they came to my office. It was in 1982 in New York, in Brooklyn, and we hit it off. And then they came the next week, and they brought some more friends. And you are all uh, links in that chain. Now we're talking about um, 30. Two, 33 years later, and probably 30, 40,000 people have come through this uh, class. I've never expected it to be this way. It was a completely unplanned thing. One thing I did was I always stuck every night, every week, no matter what, we continued the class. And, uh, and here we are. It just goes to show you that when you start something good and you do it consistently, it's not so much the quantity, it's the quality, the consistency that ultimately can re create real change. So there you go. You may, you may have come here tonight just to hear that message. Um, and because many of us don't see things through, we start something, then we start something else. Having that type of um, relentless focus and, uh, and uh, step by step, there's the classic story with Rabbi Akiva, who uh, till the age 40 had not studied any Torah, was not familiar at all with his own tradition and heritage. Some say he was a convert, some say he was a son of converts. And uh, it was a woman who he ultimately married that convinced him to begin. But the ultimate thing that really got to him was he was w meditating, walking in the forest, and he saw a, uh, a brook of water. He saw a little waterfall, and he looked and he saw that uh, there was a, a, um, um, a little hole, like bore right through, like drilled through a stone. And... Um, and he, could, he was thinking, why is there like this perfect hole? I know we hear that. Uh, put it on your. Do uh, you not have silence this thing? Okay, it's fine, it's fine. Um, it's like delayed. It's all right. He saw this perfect hole drilled through the stone and was thinking, how did a hole like that get there? And as he was observing, he realized that the drops of water coming from the waterfall kept hitting the stone. And over the years, just a drop, you'd never think that a stone could be pierced, but the drop by drop by drop over the years, and he said to himself, if a stone, an inanimate stone can be pierced, then definitely a soul, a spirit, a heart, no matter what our habits are, no matter what our patterns are, whatever we're stuck in, that if you do something consistently, step by step, drop by drop by drop, the, let's call it the antithesis of Chinese water torture, you can actually bear, bear a hole in a stone. So this is what I learned in my own little journey here and all the fascinating people that I met throughout these years. It's been an unbelievable journey in the sense of uh, respecting the dignity of every one of our travels and trajectories. Everybody has their own bizarre uh, script, the twists and turns that everybody goes through. So it's so by means of introduction somewhat of what this how this, uh, I don't even like to call it a class, let's call it this adventure, maybe this uh, encounter, this interaction, um, uh, this uh, intersection of souls, intersect of, intersecting of souls is what it's all about. So this week, I'd like to begin by, first of all, dedicating the class, is dedicated in honor of Arik and Ori, Aurelia Zander. Yeah, their honor. And uh, we titled the class Ebola, Isis, and other global plagues. Entering an uncertain world, modern day floods, what will this new year bring? That's this mouthful of a title that we uh, title. Now, I want to just begin with a small preface. You know, everybody has their own, as I said, story. Um, uh, being that I've been around many years and uh, not that I consider myself old, I actually feel very young, but I've, I have some experience, I've been around and I recognize that one of the great challenges that we Jews especially face, and I would say actually not just Jews, but all people, and I'll use one word, the word is relevance, called spiritual relevance. 
um, that when we, uh, we the, you look at the Jewish people, and the Jewish people are a good barometer and a litmus test often for all nations of the world, because often what happens to Jews first ends up happening to others afterwards, both for good and for bad, if you look through history. And um, the interesting thing is that a few hundred years ago, a few centuries ago, three, four hundred years ago, 99.9% .9 of Jews were traditional. Yeah. There was no word called orthodox because there was no reform or conservative. So everybody was called observant, whatever the word. I don't like titles and labels, but whatever the word. Is. And that may have been because there were no other options. Even if you wanted to assimilate, even if you wanted to inter in mingle with a secular so-called um, Christian, Protestant, Catholic world, you were not allowed because it was a very strong segregation, which was far worse than just segregation. There was the discrimination, the expulsions, the genocides of Jews throughout the Middle Ages, close to 2,000 years. And then something happened the last few hundred years that changed the whole picture. Today, I don't know, I don't know the numbers, but it's definitely the majority of Jews are, are assimilated, are secular in the sense of observance. And uh, the minority are the ones that are more observant. Um, and so what, whoever you look at, whatever Jew you look at, whether it's a Jew that's considered secular or not, again, I hate these labels because I don't even know what the word observant really means. I'm just using a name that people use um, because who knows, you know, you could have a person that dresses and uh, behaves and externally looks like the most pious or devout Jew and they can be completely corrupt and the decadent and so on. You can have another person who doesn't look at all the part and can be the most refined, spiritual, uh, godly person. So I just wanted to state that for the record. But, um, but regardless how you define it, the key word relevance, relevance. You have many Jews who grew up in traditional homes, went to yeshiva, got bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, and have a, a, a pretty decent Jewish education. But then if you ask the question, how relevant is their Judaism to them? It's a whole different question, you know, because you could define such Jews as being cultural Jews. You grew up your whole life with it. I'm, I'm, I grew up that way. I grew up in a home where Shabbat, Shabbat and Kosher and Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and all the rest of the holidays was a given. Like any type of uh, tradition that you would grow up in, it could, you know, just like Muslims have their traditions and Christians have theirs. You know, I don't mean to sound sacrilegious, but everybody's got their culture. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's by choice or that it's necessarily evolved or developed, or in any way mature, and, and, and so on. It means that's what you grew up with. Everybody grows up with certain customs. Whatever, whatever family, and ho family and home, everybody's got their customs. So the question of relevance is a whole different story. We're coming now, let's say, from the high holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot. And you ask most, let's say, traditional Jews who, who keep these holidays uh, to the T, to the letter of the law, and beyond. He asks, okay, so did you come out changed? Are you a changed human being? Are you a more refined person? Are you a more spiritual person? Are you more giving? Or you went in the same, you come out exactly as you went in. The same greedy, selfish, uh, for good or for bad personality. Nothing really changed. And many people will answer, well, maybe something changed, but I don't feel it, that type of thing. I'm sure something changed, but I can't sense it. So then, if you're just a, a simple child, we'll ask the question, so then what are the, what are the purpose of these holidays if they haven't done anything for us to make us a more, uh, more refined, in some way more, um, more giving, more, uh, as I said, godly, more divine, however, whatever you want to call it, more spiritual. So, th so you could find there's a big dissonance between so-called ritual and spiritual. Now, we take the other group of the Jews, which is the larger number, the more unaffiliated, maybe that's a better word than unaffiliated, that don't necessarily affiliate with any particular denomination, may, may have gone to synagogue Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, which is, the, which is what many Jews do uh, because of whatever reason. There, for sure, there's no relevance because they don't even follow, they don't even have it as a part of their culture. So however you twist and turn it, I would say that every Jew today on earth suffers from this challenge, which is, is, is Judaism relevant to my life? I'll, I'll make it even more blunt. I'm sure you've all been to synagogue, and uh, you have seen that every Shabbat they read the Torah. Take out the Torah scrolls. We just danced with it a few days ago on some Torah. Torah scroll. Every week there's a chapter that we read um, that corresponds to that week. This week we begin reading Noah. We read Noah, the second chapter of Genesis. 
Last Shabbat, we read Breshit, the first chapter of Genesis. And it's a whole uh, pomp and circumstance. We take out the Torah, you sing songs, everyone rises. The Torah is a holy, sacred scroll. And then the reader of the Torah reads the Torah. And you'll see in many synagogues, you'll see how people follow every letter of the, every word, every letter. And they even correct the Balkorah, the reader, if he misses something or he reads it the wrong way. And it's a whole thing. So then ask somebody who's re- who listens to every word being read in the Torah and say, okay, so what message did you take away from this? Here you have a perfect a glaring example of a tradition that's followed and relevance can be completely lacking. So I'll say, well, we read about the great flood. Well, we're going to be reading this Shabbat about the great flood, that God brought the flood that destroyed the whole world, and Noah and his children and family were saved, and then the world was rebuilt. So everyone knows that story. Last week we read the story of the Garden of Eden with the serpent, good and evil, tree. You know, they're the classic stories that have become very popular, even in popular culture. You know, the stories that, that, that have fascinated people. The Bible remains the biggest bestseller, more than any book, more a combination of all bestsellers. No, no book sells as much as the Bible. It sells millions of copies a year. Millions. It's not even on any bestseller list. It continues to sell. And the stories of the Bible, as I said, the tree of knowledge has become a classic. Jacob wrestling with the angel. Of course, Moses, Prince of Egypt, was an uh, animated film a few years ago. Um, and you have a whole series of... Uh, of um, uh, the Ten Commandments, Cecil B. DeMille, the Ten Commandments popularized the parting of the sea and so on. Okay, but then if you ask someone the question, okay, why is the Great Flood, how relevant is it to our lives? So at best someone will say, listen, it's a sacred Torah and we read our history. We're reading what happened in the past. There's something about that. But is there any message? So how can you expect, let's say, a child that's inquisitive or curious, especially skeptical, to want to come and listen to the Torah week after week if they don't find any relevance. At the end of the day, the things we choose to do or not to do are defined by, their, by our perceived relevance of these things. The places you travel to, the books you read, the magazines you follow, the, the television or movies or internet sites that you visit, etc., etc. You find relevance. It may, be, uh, f- it may be foolish relevance, but you find something there. Entertainment fills your time. It stimulates you, keeps you busy. 